Good afternoon, everybody. This is Anthony from Amped Airsoft, and I got my battle buddy, Matt. And today we're going to pleb to pro helmets. Brain buckets. Brain buckets. Let's do it. So, today we're going to be discussing helmets. Um, we see people screw them up a lot. We see people put lots of stuff on them. I figured a lot of you guys have a lot of questions about how certain setups are run. So we're just going to go through them. And that's it. We're just going to teach you about them. So that way you guys know. That way when you get on the internet and try to talk to people, they don't make fun of you. Eh, figure that's pretty, pretty, pretty nice way to put it. So first question. Are helmets important? Very. For me. Yeah. <laughs> helmets are important to me. Helmets are not important to some people. Mm -hmm. They're not important to everybody, but they're important to me. And why are helmets important to me? Because I hurt myself <laughs> a lot. Door jams, trees, low-hanging pipes, windows, walls in general, everything. <laughs> helmets are important mm -hmm. to me. Now, I see a lot of people running around with boonie caps, baseball caps, you know, whatever's comfortable for you. Just remember that this is, this is us teaching you about what our opinions and experiences have taught us. Your results may vary. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the different styles of helmet that you see. And we're going to start off with an older style that has been in existence for a while now. And this is the ACH or MIC 2000. This is the full ear cut. This was introduced to the Army in the mid-2000s, replacing the Pazgat style helmet from the mm, late 80s, early 90s, mm. up until the early 2000s. The big thing about this one is it's uh, cut for comms. The the earpieces around the outside are larger to accommodate comm headsets like the big comtac style headsets and stuff like that. And they have a, a head harness system typically with a nape that hits the back of your head, chin strap, four points of contact on your head. And this is the current issue helmet to 90 plus percent of all of our military. Mm -hmm. This is what we get. There are three different styles of MIC helmet. There is the MIC 2001, which has the ear completely cut out. Mm -hmm. And the MIC 2002, which you can see up front, which has the half ear. Basically, this, this ear piece is cut in half. Those are typical amongst the airsofters. A lot of people don't use the older Pazgat style helmets very often just because the repro ones weigh as much as the real ones, which are heavy. So people, a lot of people the, don't really. the fake, like, plastic ones, they're very inaccurate. They have a really weird pad system. Not, they just don't even look good, so most people avoid those now. And now, most people today run helmets that we refer to as bump helmets. There's the Opscore style bump helmets, which come in a fast bump, a carbon bump, which has circular holes cut in it, or in a maritime ballistic style so we have a real one and we have some repro ones right here and then the other brand the other most popular brand right now is the windy bump helmets which come in up oh, same exact ones they come in a regular plastic bump a carbon and a ballistic the only exception being the opscore comes in a sport model and a standard the team windy has a search and rescue model mm -hmm. and their bump helmet as well their standard bump so mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about sizing. Go over sizing for these helmets. Explain to people the difference between sizing a real helmet and sizing repro bump helmet, which is what you'll most typically see. Um, if you've been playing Airsoft any amount of time, you will realize that 80% of products used come from overseas, and they have a different sizing chart in there. So a lot of the times, sizing numbers and things aren't exactly set. So a lot of times people will be saying it's Chinese size versus American size things of that nature so a lot of times since a lot of repro products aren't exact copies they they'll have off sizing and you know sometimes you'll see it at games where a guy with a big head has a small helmet and it just doesn't look right so your best bet honestly is the real ones have the good sizing things like team wendy they offer size one and size two but obviously they're extremely adjustable. You move pads around, you have the suspension system. The, the fun thing about uh, repro sizing, your typical Emerson or repro style helmet 
it is considered a medium to large or medium to small size helmet. Mm -hmm. um, and Opscore helmets come in medium large and then large extra large. Helmet I wear is a large extra large because I have a fat head. That's just the way it is. And also Opscore, when you go to buy from their actual website, not only do they take, in a, unlike the Chinese brands, they also take into account the height of your head too. Mm -hmm. So they also have two length of chin straps with two sets of head harnesses. So if you have a fat short head you can get a large extra large with a small medium or large mm -hmm. medium chin strap and vice versa you can piecemeal the order together and get a helmet that actually fits your head the chinese ones are one size fits all or one size doesn't fit you if you happen mm -hmm. to be one of the poor guys that it just doesn't fit like that's just how it's going to be yeah I, they come in one size one set chin straps and it's almost all the same across the board regardless of type yeah, but sometimes their batches can be different too. Even like the batches have, can be different. I have an old school uh, Emerson Opscore replica. It's nothing compared to the newer versions that we carry now. So it's they change. You know, it, it's really it's it's hit and miss, but that's what you get with a repro. So I mean, honestly, I would recommend if you can front the money for a real helmet, go for it, because that also leads into one of the main reasons that we buy real helmets, and that's their impact rating. Exactly. Now is we're going to go over the typical features of a modern style military helmet. Now this includes the some of the newer types of MIC helmets, like our helmets right here. We'll kind of slide those into view a little bit so you can see them on there. These typical newer style military helmets are going to come with a NVG shroud up front, some type of rail attachment system along the side, an adjustable padding system as well as a twist dial for a head retention system that tightens it down and a cup chin strap with a, with a quick disconnect buckle. What Matt and I both run is we both run real helmets. I run an Ops Core fast bump helmet, and he runs the Team Wendy X-Fill LTP. Ooh, it's all fancy. Yeah, lots so of letters. So <laughs> they have a lot of the same similar features. They have rails on the side, adjustable nape padding around with the twist dials, um, and adjustable padding on the inside of the helmet to fit your head better. They also have built-in shrouds for MVGs, and they are impact rated. So mm -hmm. we're going to probably display some facts on the side of the of the thing so you guys can see the, 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 the facts because there's a lot of them, and whew, not going not gonna <laughs> to read them all because it's, it's pretty awesome. All right, so the big thing about uh, the difference between these two styles of helmets, though, is that the SARD rails are different on each one. Mm -hmm. So... Team Wendy has a di has a different solution. What's the solution for the Team Wendy side rail set? The rail that everybody is aware of is the Opscore Arc. Wendy basically they just did a 2.0 system. Um, theirs is a little more proprietary because they're newer, not as popular as Opscore yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the Wendy uh, 2.0 rail system, they all come with a uh, Magpul Picatinny rail that actually bolts straight to it with captured nuts. And that's how most of the things are actually attached to the Team Wendy systems now. And they also have uh, slottings in here so you can hook your extra bungees to it for you know night vision support or strapping other things down to your helmet. Um, I'm really a big fan of the, the rail. It's nice and sleek. Mm -hmm. You can remove the rails if you don't want them. So I'm a big fan of it, really. All right, so Opscore, on the other hand, which you can probably see a little easier because mine's covered in Ragnar at the moment, mm -hmm. but you can see it a lot easier on Saffron's helmet is they have the arc rail, which is the basically the accessory rail connecting system. That's mm -hmm. that's basically all it is. It's been around for a lot longer, so it's a lot more standardized. There's a lot more stuff to find for it. There's a lot more attachment points. Um, it's built for modularity. Now, there are rail segments that you can mount into the arc rail system. The Team Windy has two tiers of mounting, the Magpul rail and then the built-in rail. 
the ops core is all on one, so it's a little bit lower profile, but in, in case you have to add a lot of crap to your helmet, you really have to fight for real estate on where to put your stuff. It kind of can become an issue if you like to run a needless amount of stuff on your head. But that being said, I don't know about the Team Wendy one, but the ops core one, all of the head harness system is bolted in through the same bolts as the rail. So if you take the rails off, all of your head harness mm -hmm. system would come undone with it as well. So you'd have to find a way to mount all that back up. Yeah, the Wendy's the same, and it actually has extra bolts just for the rail to the shell then. Yeah. So that just has a, it's, it's a couple extra smaller bolts for stability. So most of the time when guys run helmets, uh, we run into an issue, and that issue is iPro. So mm -hmm. we run into an issue when running iPro with helmets. Helmets need to sit about right here on your brow line and sit flat. Most eye pro is big and tall and thick and sits farther up on your forehead, causing your helmet to tip. Mm -hmm. can also cause your eye pro to fog, which could be a dangerous situation for people who like to not listen to the rules and try to clear their goggles on the field. Mm -hmm. Matt and I have both uh, gone through this ingenious system as we've switched over to Smith Optics outside the wire turbo fan goggles. So, And they also come with, for the arc rail system, for the ops core, they come with bolt-on mounts with for and then you swap out the side straps for your goggles with bungee cords so you can quickly take them on and off so there's that other fan systems that we would recommend i have used one of these for years this is an action mic fan system basically it's a pretty powerful fan with a triple a battery pack that's velcroed onto your helmet you can run the tube in through your helmet or run it so it cools your head or you can run it into the side of your goggles turn it on blows air in defogs your goggles. And this is a cheap solution to the turbo fan problem. This is only 43 bucks. This That includes tax for local guys. Um, so it's a little cheaper for guys online. Um, a lot of guys mm. like to run really low profile goggles like the Oakley M frames with mm. the Hilo kits. Um, I've had some hit or miss things with like those and boogie regulators and stuff uh, like that. Longest time I ran the the Bolle tactical ones. All right. Yeah. One of the main reasons a lot of guys run uh, helmets is for mounting night vision devices or cameras to their head especially for guys like the, us that work for a shop we have to do things for our youtube channel for you guys so all of the footage that you see is captured with a helmet cam mounted to a helmet um, we prefer to mount them to helmets because they're more stable there's less vibration mm -hmm. makes the video a higher quality different ways to mount your cameras to your helmet so one of the one of the big ways that i used to run i used to run a contour camera and what I did was, a lot of guys like to buy the mounts. I don't like those because it makes the camera stick out really far. Mm -hmm. And it also, if the camera catches on something, it's something that will break. What I like to do, and what I suggest if you guys have contour cameras, is to take a piece of industrial strength hook side Velcro and then use the flag patches on the sides of your helmets to mm -hmm. mount your camera there. And then tie your camera off to your helmet so that if you do catch it on something, it pulls away. It won't break any mounts or break any hardware on your camera. And then it'll just dangle, and you won't lose it, and mm -hmm. then you can find it. Running nods and things like that, lots of guys use the NVG shroud built into their helmets. We also use the NVG shrouds to mount cameras to. Mm -hmm. um, what you can see right here is Matt and I both use GoPros. I use a GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, as he does. And we have two different styles of mounting our camera. Matt has a traditional flip-up forward style camera mount. I have... A camera mount with two extra segments built into it that allows the camera to angle down so I can move the camera closer in front of my eyes. As you can see, it doesn't block my eyes and it doesn't hit my peripheral vision. It still sits about right here. And that allows the, the camera to be closer to my field of view. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to consider is a lot of guys for nods and for camera use, they like to run external power sources or counterweight pouches. So we have a counterweight pouch on Matt's helmet. We have a counterweight pouch on my helmet. Matt's counterweight pouch is just to balance his camera's weight on his head so that his helmet stays straight. Mm -hmm. Mine is actually a backup a battery. This is a Tenergy 13,000 mAh lithium-ion battery that will keep a GoPro running in standby for a confirmed so far. We haven't tested it any more than that, but so far confirmed for 16 hours straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was very useful Black Sheep. That's how I recorded. My camera never turned off the entire mm -hmm. game. It just ran. Um, and this is what I use to do it. And I use a, a U.S. Tactical sewing counterweight pouch and a USB cable routed up through my helmet.
right, so since Matt and I usually are the ones that run helmets the most out of everybody here because we're accident prone and we tend to hurt ourselves, we're going to go through our personal helmet setup so that you guys understand what we run, why we run it, why it's where it's at, and then you guys can help that knowledge into your brain, use it to kind of like put your own stuff together and maybe mm -hmm. figure out what works for you because necessarily what works for me might not work for you, but it might help. Yeah. It might give you an idea. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through our helmets. What I have in front of me right here is an OpsCore Fast Bump Helmet. I have the Sport Edition. Now, a couple reasons why I bought the Sport Edition. I bought the Sport Edition, one, because it's like $50 cheaper. And two, uh, it's $50 cheaper. Um, basically, it's the exact same helmet as their Fast Bump, but it has a couple of things that they changed in order to make the price cheaper for the end consumer. And then I fixed those things. Um, the first thing is that it comes with a single chin strap, which I actually prefer over the cup mm -hmm. chin strap that wraps around your entire chin. The single chin strap allows it to be easier for you to speak. It also works really well if you have a lot of facial hair. It doesn't get caught on your facial hair. The buckles don't get you all tore up and chafy and shit like that, which is nice. And then on top of that, it's got plastic bolts on the helmet that attach the arc rails. And then it doesn't have the bungee cords at the fast bump military version has all of that stuff you can purchase for less than like 15 bucks and i replaced all of that stuff except for the chin strap i left the chin strap on but all the bolts and the bungee cords i replaced and put them on so that it actually has the bungee cord kit and the metal bolts which mm -hmm. make it exactly like the bump helmet minus the single strap i prefer the single strap i think it's great so what we're going to do is we're going to work from the front of my helmet to the back and we're going to start we're going to work down the right side we'll kind of loop around the back and we'll come around to the front up front, you can see that I have a GoPro mount. This is a combination of the helmet, the curved helmet mount kit that you can buy for like skateboard helmets and stuff like that. And it's also a combination of the OpsCore shroud filler plastic mount. And I mounted all that stuff together so that I can remove the shroud if I need to run any kind of night div division devices or anything like that with my helmet. I can remove it. And if I ever get a different helmet, I can mount that back into mm -hmm. that shroud hole without having to do any modifications. I personally do not prefer the GoPro three-hole shroud night vision mounts for military helmets. I don't. I think they wobble too much. This is a lot more secure, and it doesn't wobble at all. So I like that more. As we head down the side of my helmet, you can see I have a Surefire HL1 headlamp. I've went ahead and modified that to fit on an arc rail without the large arc rail mount that you can buy. And what it does is it really brings the light in about two inches closer to your helmet. So it's a lot mm -hmm. more low profile. I personally use this for close range illumination whenever I need to see what I'm doing in the dark. And I also use it for a dead light because it's a red and white with an IR strobe. On the back of my helmet, I have the U.S. Tactical Sewing Company counterweight pouch in AOR1. I use this to hold the Tenergy 13,000 mAh backup battery for my GoPro. I went ahead and cut a small slit in the top for the USB cord ran the USB cord along the top of my helmet, and then on the side of my GoPro case, I have cut a hole that I've modified to run the cable into the side of the, into the, side of the case. So that way I can continuously power my, my camera. On the other side of my helmet, you'll see I have a little black box hidden underneath all the Ragnar. That is the battery box that holds my batteries for my Smith Optics outside the wire turbo fans. Unlike the ESS turbo fans, the battery box on the Smith Optics is removable, and it comes with a quick disconnect plug. So I can mount that box to my helmet and then just unhook the plug and take the goggles off and mm -hmm. run my and run it any other way I want. Really love that system. It's really great. The most pressing thing that you guys can see, the most obvious thing, is that there's a helmet cover on my helmet. A lot of guys like to run expensive helmet covers, whether they're the first spear helmet covers or they're the new LBX helmet covers, mm -hmm. things like that. And I'm not saying that those aren't great products. I'm saying that I'm cheap. <laughs> so... These helmet covers are made from camo netting that you can pick up at an army surplus store for dirt cheap, cut it to the shape of your helmet, tie it down with some 550 cord and the parts that are on my helmet. So my HL1, my GoPro, the wiring, everything holds that onto my helmet. I use two layers of it to give it a more leafy foliagey type look to it. And that also makes it so that it breaks up the shape of my helmet mm -hmm. when I'm in the woods. So people see me peeking over a log and I'm being real quiet and still they might think twice about what they're looking at just because it's nice and leafy and lumpy looking. That's how I like it. I like it a lot. What we have here is we have a mesh mask that has been modified with quick disconnect buckles that bolt into my 
ops core arc rails so that I can take it on and take it off real easy like. Repro bump helmets come with the parts to that you can do this to your goggles and you can also do this to your goggles or your mesh mask if you want to do it. It comes with the parts to do it. I just use the repro stuff that we had mm-hmm. upstairs. I bought it for like five bucks. Came in like with a bunch of sets of them. And then I just took a cheap mesh mask, stitched the stitch the uh, straps back together around the loops and that's all I did um, but those also work on goggle straps if you want to use the rotating clips for your goggles as well I highly recommend them it's a cheap easy mm-hmm. solution to having something that can quick on and off your head okay so for my setup I run the Team Wendy Xfil LTP stands for lightweight tactical polymer helmet it's their standard bump helmet so I'll start from my left side Basically, I don't run anything on my rails right now, but I do have both of the Magpul rails mounted. When it is a CQB or a nighttime game, I have a InSight Technologies uh, M3 pistol light that I can slide on there just as a you know up-close light in case I need it. I run a GoPro mount in the NVG shroud, but I run it the opposite way that Anthony does. So it, people sometimes like to call it the unicorn mount because it kind of arcs up a little bit. Um, it's always worked for me. I've never had problems, you know, bumping in, into anything, knocking, you know, breaking it loose, anything like that. I've never had a problem with it. For my goggles, I also run the Smith Optics outside the wires. Um, I actually keep my battery pack attached to the strap in case a uh, rare occurrence where I don't wear a helmet. I've also added a piece of foam inside of here to protect the battery pack because it actually is not a hard plastic case. It's a plastic case with the batteries and then like a soft rubber cover for them probably to cut on weight so i just added a piece of foam to that just to protect the batteries and everything in there on the back i run a explosive ops gear counterweight that just kind of helps balance the helmet when you have a gopro on it it's also kind of helping the neck train for when i do uh, get a battery pack attached to the back to run the gopro for much longer and then on the top, I also run a SNS Precision Red V light just as a backup dead light in case you know it's a night game, something dark where a dead rig won't be seen. Plus the Ragnar, obviously. Ragnar. Yeah, and the reason we both run Ragnar on our helmets, um, it's a cheap camo cover. It's really nice. And then the best part is, is we can find each other because no one else does it. Mm. <laughs> That's the best part is that it's easy for me to identify where he is and vice versa. It's a very good ID tool. It's a very good ID tool. A lot of my team members from Ohio actually started to do it too. Mm-hmm. So now we can easily find each other wherever we're on the field. It's actually kind of funny. All right, everybody. So this has been Anthony. Matt. And this has been an overview of how we run our helmet setups as well as a little bit of general knowledge about how helmets work, what they look like, different styles, mounting options and stuff like that. If you guys have any questions about how we run specific things on our helmet, if we didn't cover it in enough detail for you, ask down below in the doobly-doo, as well as suggestions for other Pleb to Pro videos. Mm-hmm. Remember, this is just a just an informed opinion, really, more so than anything. This isn't gospel on how you should run your helmet. Just, you know, that way if you guys were confused or needed help, that's what we're here for. Ask questions down below. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Vine, Snapchat, Tumblr. Am I missing one? I think you got it, Insta- did I say Instagram? I think I said Instagram. Yeah, but yeah, well, whatever. We got it. Uh, Anyways, this has been Anthony, Matt. Thanks for stopping by, guys. See you later. See ya.